Newman's lyric here, I am a late discovered, multiply neurodivergent adult, meaning I'm autistic, I also have ADHD, I am in my mid-30s, I am pale skinned, with short green hair, with shaved sides, and glasses. I am sitting in an RV, wearing a black collared shirt, in front of a white microphone. This week, I am going to be answering a reader question, and reader question this week is, is getting an adult autism diagnosis worth it? If you would like to know my thoughts, please do stay tuned. In the interests of honesty and transparency, I am going to say before we get started that there is not going to be a one-size-fits-all answer to this question of is it worth it to get an autism diagnosis. The answer to this question is going to be yes or no depending widely on your own individual circumstances in your life. For me, it was worthwhile to go ahead and get the autism diagnosis, but that is because of my specific circumstances, which I will share with you. I'm also going to share with you some other circumstances that can help you to decide if getting an autism diagnosis might be worthwhile or even helpful to you. First, I'd like to talk about my own situation. At the time that I was thinking that potentially I might be autistic and was struggling with a lot of other co-occurring health problems that are very common with autistic people, I was working a corporate job and had health insurance and was able to get many, though not all, of the expenses for my appointments, for doctor's visits and certain things covered. Having insurance and being able to have some help with payment for what can be a very expensive assessment process for people who do not have insurance, depending on what country you live, which can cost thousands of dollars if you are uninsured. That is a big deciding factor for me. I was able to afford the assessment. Another factor for me was that I needed accommodations in the workplace. I needed to ask for changes to be made in order for me to be able to continue working in the job environment that I was in without modifying and changing the way I was working, I was going to be unable to continue to work. Which now is why I work for myself because I can accommodate myself much better than anyone else can and I can accommodate myself fully. Uh, I've had employers that do accommodate me and employers that don't accommodate me The difference in the work I am able to do when I am accommodated versus when I am unaccommodated is night and day. I can do very basic remedial tasks, barely, that would normally be far below my ability and skill level if I am unaccommodated. Whereas if I am accommodated, I can do some impressive things. Just give me the tools I need to succeed. Oh, it's not that complicated. Some factors you may want to take into consideration when deciding if getting an autism assessment or going through the diagnostic process is worthwhile for you might include if you are going to be helped potentially by acquiring this diagnosis, are you looking for accommodations, what benefit do you feel you will get from this, even if it is just having someone to confirm the information for you. Is it going to really be helpful for you or could it be potentially more harmful for you to have this information? For example, in my case, it was helpful and necessary, but I have met and spoken with parents who have been diagnosed autistic and then had this come up in custody battles in family court and had this label used against them. 
having that on the record. So there are circumstances where being labeled as autistic could potentially not be helpful and could be harmful depending on your situation. That is just because of the amount of discrimination and stigma associated with being autistic. Not because being autistic is bad, it's just that people's misconceptions about autistic people are very harmful and depending on your individual given situation, being attached to that additional label can have other unforeseen consequences. Uh, But for me, this label has been life-changing and has really set me free and given me answers and helped me because in general, I tend to be someone who with anything in life will feel imposter syndrome. It doesn't matter what it is. So I probably would be someone who would have imposter syndrome if I hadn't been diagnosed. I wouldn't believe in myself. I would doubt myself. So it's like, yes, you're not wrong. You really are autistic. I needed that. You might not need that. I feel like I shouldn't have needed that, but I did. That was something else that I got from the diagnosis that I needed. If you don't need any of that and it will not be helpful for you, especially if it could be harmful for you, my caution would be to maybe consider not going down the route of getting a diagnosis. Just really think a lot about your individual circumstance. If you come to the decision that seeking out an autism diagnosis or an ADHD diagnosis or any other neurodivergent diagnosis is right for you because there may be other neurotypes watching here. Hi, you're welcome. You're welcome to be here too. Welcome to the neuro family, neuro kin and neuro siblings. Hi, I'm glad you're here. If you are thinking about going to get an adult assessment for being neurodivergent because many of these assessment processes are designed for children, whether it's autistic, ADHD, dyslexia, a lot of these things are geared towards evaluating children. School is often when we're caught for having learning differences or disabilities because we struggle to learn the traditional ways in the traditional school systems. Because the assessments and the processes are often really focused on young people and children, it is so incredibly important that you, as an adult, going to get an assessment, vet people you are looking to work with and look for a doctor who specifically has experience diagnosing adults. If you go to someone who only works on children and is working just off the criteria for autistic or ADHD, neurodivergent children, and doesn't know what neurodivergent adults look like, they do not understand neurodivergent masking and how neurodivergent people learn to cope with and even can learn to hide their neurodivergence as they age, these people will not be able to understand you and are not qualified to diagnose you because they are only working with children. They don't know adults. That is a thing of caution to be careful because there is also a lot of misdiagnosis out there being being diagnosed with the wrong thing. In psychology too we see that psychology has a problem of being dominated by cis white men and a lot of criteria are written in that way so that People who are assigned female at birth are often diagnosed more with certain groupings of diagnoses and then people who are assigned male are often grouped in other diagnoses. It's just a lot of misogyny. I really hope that answers your question. Is an autism diagnosis worth it? That really depends on your individual circumstance and what is going on in your personal life. There's been other videos I have done about autism diagnosis in the past and self-diagnosis. I will try to remember to link those at the end of this video so that you can check those out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I do put out new videos each and every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you do not miss those updates when they come out. A huge shout out and thank you to the YouTube channel members, Patreon subscribers, and Facebook subscribers who do the little monetary subscription to help support this channel and help me continue to put out great free content for everyone here on the interwebs. I couldn't do it without you. I'm so incredibly grateful. Thank you. I think Patreon now, they let you subscribe annually and you can subscribe for less than $12 a year. It depends on what country you're in. It's 
It's it's a dollar a month, and you get a discount if you subscribe annually. If you want to subscribe on Patreon, that's probably the most affordable way to subscribe. I have that set up so everyone gets the same subscription level regardless of what they pay. It's pay what you want subscription. And a dollar, I think, is as low as Patreon would let me put it. I put it as cheap as I possibly can on Patreon. So that's probably the most affordable platform you can support me on if you want to do so. If not, no pressure. Sharing my videos is an equally helpful way for you to support me and help me get the word out. That's worth its weight in gold, really. Well, a share doesn't weigh anything. Uh-oh. Yeah, that doesn't work. A share is worth its weight in gold. Well, a share doesn't weigh anything, so a share is worth nothing. Well, that's not what I was trying to say. A share is worth a lot to me. <laughs> you being here is worth a lot to me. You giving me the question for today's video, you know who you are, that means a lot to me. So thank you so much. I will talk to you all in the future. See you next week. Bye, humans.